This is my absolute favorite time of the year. Today's the first day of spring, and in the forecast, we've got some pretty warm days coming. Also, I've noticed in the forecast, there's a substantial chance of rain, and the rain really gets the amphibians in my backyard vocalizing to one another. Credit where credit is due, a lot of these resources that I have came directly from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Frog and Toad website. I'll take this presentation and I'll load it inside of the description of the video so you can access any of those websites for reference. Our first species of frog is the Blanchard's Cricket Frog. This is a species that is threatened in the state of Michigan. Blanchard's Cricket Frog. The call of this frog is very subtle and bears somewhat of a resemblance to the chirp of a cricket, but it sounds more like tapping two metal balls together. The tapping will begin slowly and gradually get faster. A call can last for 30 or 40 seconds. This species is considered a species of special concern in Michigan, which means that it is thought to be rare in the state and may be considered for listing on the endangered species list in the future. It is important that you accurately identify the call of this frog. It is recommended that you record the calls if possible and have them verified by an experienced frog surveyor if you're not sure of what you're hearing. Our next species you're probably familiar with, it's the bullfrog. The bullfrog. The call of this frog is so low that it easily qualifies as the base of Michigan's frog orchestra. The deep bass notes are similar to a foghorn but with a musical ring. Once heard, it is not likely to be mistaken for any other frog in Michigan. The calls are usually isolated, but occasionally bullfrogs sing in chorus. The bullfrog is heard here with songbirds, green frogs, and a wood duck in the background. And here's another audio. Our next species is the eastern gray tree frog, not to be confused with the copse tree frog. Eastern gray tree frog and Culp's gray tree frog. These two Michigan tree frogs cannot be distinguished from one another from physical attributes. They can only be identified by their calls. The two species may be found singing together in the same wetland or separately. The loud, resonant trill of the eastern gray tree frog is slower, longer, and more melodic than that of Culp's gray tree frog. You'll hear peepers, a leopard frog, and an occasional green frog in this recording. Here's another audio. And 
And now the Cope's tree frog. Cope's gray tree frogs have a shorter, faster, and harsher call than the eastern. This recording has both tree frogs calling intermittently. First the Cope's, then the eastern. Probably many of you are familiar with the Eastern American toad. The American toad. The high-pitched, tremulous call of the American toad can be recognized by its length. The musical trill may continue for 30 seconds and end abruptly. There is a slight but easily distinguishable difference in the pitch of individual calls. Combined, the differences blend into a rather harmonious chorus. Our next species is the fowler's toad, and again this is another species of special concern. Fowler's toad. Fowler's toads resemble the American toad more in appearance than in voice. It calls a little later in the year than the American toad. These toads are uncommon in the state and is only found in the western and southern tier of Michigan counties. The call resembles the bleat of a sheep and is given as a single note. It is rarely heard in a full chorus. The next species is the green frog. The green frog. The call of this frog has been heard by most people at one time or another, although they may not have recognized it for what it was. It is often confused with the bullfrog, but once you hear them side by side, you won't make that mistake again. It is a vigorous call with considerable carrying power. It resembles the twang of a loose banjo string or a very large rubber band. It is usually given as a single note. Our next species is the mink frog. The mink frog. In Michigan, the mink frog is only found in the Upper Peninsula. If you think you hear this frog elsewhere in the state, you will need to get the observation verified before reporting it. The call is likened to the sound of horses' hooves trotting over a cobblestone street. An occasional green frog can be heard in the background.
Our next species is the northern leopard frog. The northern leopard frog. The deep, rattling, uneven snore of the leopard frog can be confused with the call of the pickerel, which is next on this tape. The slow snore, similar to the sound produced by a heavy, creaking door slowly opening, is often interspersed with a chuckling sound. This recording, taken in the rain, also has American toads singing in the background. Our next species you're probably pretty familiar with. It's the northern spring peeper. The spring peeper. The spring peeper is probably the best known of all the spring calling frogs. It is Michigan's smallest frog and has possibly the loudest call. Its high ascending peep can be heard for one quarter mile or more when winds are calm. Occasionally its call is trilled. A chorus, when heard from a distance, sounds like the jingling of sleigh bells. Peepers are our most abundant frog species and are usually heard calling in a full chorus. Our next species is another one of special concern. It's the pickerel frog. The pickerel frog. The soft snore of the pickerel frog can be confused with that of the leopard frog. A suspected call observation of the pickerel frog should be verified later by sight if possible. Leopard frogs have historically been more abundant, but are found in similar habitats as pickerels. In general, the snore of the pickerel frog is more regular and has less carrying power than that of the leopard frog. Next is the chorus frog. There are two species of chorus frog in Michigan, the boreal and the western. The chorus frog. We have two types of chorus frogs in Michigan, the western and the boreal. The somewhat musical call of the western chorus frog lacks great carrying power. You'll have to listen carefully to hear it in a chorus of spring peepers which are often in the same breeding pond. The ascending call, lasting for one or two seconds, is similar to the sound produced by running a fingernail across the teeth of a high-quality, fine-toothed comb.
wood frog. So we've gone over all of the species of frogs and toads that would be found in Michigan. So what are some things you can do to help, especially in the area of conservation? Frogs and toads face a variety of threats from habitat loss, pollution, illegal collection, and overharvest. They are very important in our natural ecosystems. They contribute to ecological systems as predator and prey. It's important to take and possess uh, any reptiles or any amphibians in a manner that is appropriate with the fish guide. There are three Michigan species that are currently listed, listed as endangered, threatened, or species of special concern. And as a reminder, they are the Blanchard's cricket frog, the fowler's toad, and the pickerel frog. So how can you help? One, this video starts. We can learn about them. We also need to know our state and local federal laws that protect frogs and toads in their habitat. You can purchase a fishing license. The dollars from your fishing license go towards habitat conservation. Supporting conservation efforts in order to protect wetlands and other habitats can go a long way as well. Never buy wild native uh, caught frogs or toads from pet dealers. Never release non-native frogs and toads or other animals for that matter into the wild. They can disrupt natural ecosystems. You can volunteer for a spring frog and toad survey or you can report any frog and toad activity to the michiganherpatlas.org. Frog and Toad Michigan Annual Surveys happen every spring. There's some information attached at the top of this slide that you could link to. Speaking of the Michigan Herp Atlas, this is a great resource for you to not only explore frogs and toads, but also reptiles and other amphibians like salamanders. The Michigan Herp Atlas even has an app that you can take photos and document the location in which you found specific species. As a general rule, you should let all animals go back in their natural ecosystem. Take a photograph to remember and send them on their way. And then record your photos in the Michigan Herp Atlas. I hope this video was helpful and I hope it gives you some tools to go outdoors and try to identify a number of species of Michigan frogs and toads. Remember, it's springtime, so we're going to start hearing them a lot more frequently in the next couple of weeks.